Let me just log in here. I had this thing in me that we as women, we must make our mark. You know, I found that a name that says, please take notes, we're here to stay, we're here to claim our own space as, as a female-owned company. Uh, I think the, the, the name was so fitting mm. for my personal agenda. You've got the full view of what is happening in the airport. I've studied in, in various fields. I started with the public management at the, it was Pentec those days, I think it's CPUT now. And then I went to, to, to University of Stellenbosch, did project management. That's the program, that, that's, the, that's the course that really created the career for me because I happened to project manage IT projects. That's where my passion for IT started. It's male dominated. I think we as women, if we don't push the boundaries and, and, and challenge ourselves to get to the uncomfortable spaces, like the male dominated spaces and, and claim our space, I think for me that was the motivation and also the passion for technology. It's evolving almost on a daily basis. It's a, there's always something new to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll never be complacent in the space. Mm -hmm. This is our monitoring center. Those are dashboards. And other I started in the IT space in 2007, doing end-to-end -end IT services. We've since diversified into the IT security space, where we specialize in cyber security and the Internet of Things, and we also have the, the training aspect of it, which is the Cyber Excellence Academy. So it's Take Note IT with a group of companies. So we've got one company that is the cyber security, that is specializing on cyber security. In cyber security, we specialize on consulting, be it on, on, on policy development, be it on, on, on security monitoring center where we monitor the environment 24-7, we, we, we literally hunting the threats in your environment and we able to identify the threat and quarantine the machine before it spreads the whole environment. So our strategy is preventative and proactive. And we do things like your pen testing, your assessment, like I said, that the consulting, so policy development, that, that's what we do on the cyber security side of the business. And then with the Internet of Things, we about preventing the vandalism and the cable theft. We deploy different solutions that are proactive, like we, 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 we secure the, 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 the conveyor belts. They can detect the fire before it, it, it burns the whole environment. We look on saying if we, you've got a, a cable that is off value and if there's any tempering, because copper is something that is being stolen on a daily basis, it's, mm -hmm. there's a huge demand for it and we secure those assets by proactively de de deploying different solutions. So what makes us to be unique is the integrating platform that we've developed in-house, where we are able to get the camera, we are able to get the, the, the radio frequency identification tags, the, 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 the acoustic sensors to be able to, to communicate in one platform. I think for me that's very, very important. Even the forensic aspect of it, we are able to communicate it and integrate it into one platform. That's our speciality in the Internet of Things. With cyber security, that's really the new baby that is starting to crawl. We started it in 2018. Again, it, it, we were not seeing the commercial aspect of the training. Mm -hmm. With us, it was the need within the organization because with the cyber security, we were struggling to find the skill set. And then we realized that you don't really need a degree to be a cyber analyst or a forensic uh, a, a, a resolver. Then this is when we develop the program of training these young people with the fundamentals of cyber training, cyber security, and also equip them with soft skills. And that cohort that we were paying within our organization in 2018 was so successful with 30 young people, we absorbed them within the organization. Mm -hmm. Then this is when we started to, to build the business within that space and build our own LMS platform and wrote our own content because that's also very important and got it to be accredited by, 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 a, by QCTO, uh, NQ Level 4 and NQ Level 5. The mental resilience is also a, a, a very important element on, on, I think, in all of us as human beings. So we prepare those young people to be resilient in the workplace and be able to, 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 to flourish, you know, and, and then the, the, the fifth aspect will be the placement of these young people mm -hmm. into the different organizations and they get employed locally and globally so 
because we are addressing such a relevant and a, and, 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 and a needed skill set in the fourth industrial revolution, you know. So it's very important to have the alignment of what you produce, what you train the kids on, and, and, and the placement and what is needed by the market. The opportunities are endless. You know, I mean, one thing about technology is evolving every day. And now we're talking technology across. You know, you can go to the health sector, you can go to the agricultural sector, you go to the mining sector. That's technology. So you just, as a, as a female, if you think of any business to start, technology should be the, the, should be the priority. Because with all the fourth industrial revolution and, and, and the AI and people being threatened to be replaced by robots, technology will forever be in the forefront of, 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 of those cutting edge technologies. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of opportunities and we still need more women to participate in the space. It's, I mean, it's a trillion dollar industry, but over and above that, it's fascinating to see this, how the big problems that the technology is solving in our generation. I was born and bred in Mokopani, a small town um, in Limpopo. I think even grown up in a small town, because you know people that hail from small towns um, are normally not um, taken seriously as people who go, grow up in, in your bigger towns. Mm -hmm. And um, my industries are always very dusty, um, you know, type of environments. So I have always aspired and um, to see myself as somebody that would own a mine and create jobs. Mm -hmm. So for me, it still boils down to job creation because the mine normally creates jobs for people who are normally around uh, the, the vicinity. And, and I was always fascinated, I think, by, by heavy engineering, heavy equipment. Um, you know, these huge equipment, what they call production equipment, that you see in the mines, your drills, your trucks, and so on. Um, it's something that I've always found fascinating. My career basically started off in the public service space, transitioned all the way to mining and the, to the engineering sector. Um, I've always known that I'm an entrepreneur at heart, and I've always known that um, I'm going to get to a point where I will run my own business and do my own thing. Um, fast forward 2014, took a leap of faith, delved into business. Fast forward 2018, Kill Engineering Construction was born. It's a, it's a level one broad based black empowerment company. Um, the acronym, they actually call us an EPCM. So basically, EPCM stands for Engineering, Procurement and Construction Management uh, Service. So we are basically threefold. We provide a threefold service. In terms of the engineering arm, we do a condition. Um, we're only five-year projects at the moment um, where we provide um, a condition for what we call self-propelled trackless mobile machinery. These are your trucks, these are your drills, these are your shovels, these are your loaders, these are your ADPs. So that's the first service that we provide um, as a brand. The other service is the procurement brand, where we procure space and parts. Um, so in most instances, you find that um, the nature of our job is that we work with a lot of parts and a lot of tools. So sometimes the client runs out of parts. That's what we ship in and we come in and we assist in providing space and parts. The other phase is, uh, which is the third part, that is a construction management service. Um, basically, we, we construct mining infrastructure. Uh, we have a team of expertise of structural engineers who plan, who design, who construct mining infrastructure in terms of client, specific client requirements. So it depends what the client of is looking for. It can be steel structures, it can be piping, it can be conveyor belts. Um, that is a third arm of, of basically what we do uh, as a company. We also employ plus minus uh, 50 plus employees. Um, the nature of our employees is technicians, is auto electricians. Um, it's obviously we also have admin that takes uh, care of the admin department, but overall we also have a site manager who is obviously what the one that's running in playing oversight role in managing the team. We also have a site supervisor uh, as well who, who reports to, to, to the site manager. And basically our people are artisans um, because they need to make sure that they have a qualification in terms of providing an aircon service. So we call them aircon technicians. Without aircon there's no money. You actually don't have a business. And that's where we come. So aircon is so important that if aircon does not, like it fails, basically, the mine loses billions of friends at the end of the day. Um, they will not be able to do anything in terms of protect productivity, in terms of downtown, in terms of um, what they call ideal resources. And I've always believed in empowering people 
uh, mentorship has really been something that's very close to my heart because I'm also a product of, of mentorship. But there's a lot of previously um, disadvantaged citizens in the country who aspire to be engineers, who aspire to be artisans, who have no funding and so on. Um, I'm very big on paying it forward and giving back. So I started that program in terms of ensuring that let's make sure what we look at give their children who have no means, who have no funding, get them into the program, assist them, and we partner with vocational training centers in uh, Limpopo, where we are based, to ensure that we get them into artisanship mm -hmm. and we fund them and they start funding you know, with, with the program. There's three groups of people actually that we targeted. It was your matriculants who've done very well, uh, your age students, and then the other group was your NCS qualifications, people who've already acquired the NCS qualifications, but they don't have the means to do trade tests. So we assist them with funding, they write three tests, and then they qualify, get their red seal certificates as, as artisans. As you well aware that obviously to qualify as an artisan, you need the red seal mm -hmm. uh, certificates. And then the other group of people are people who are already qualified as artisans, but they're struggling to break into the job uh, market. Those are the other ones that we take in from an apprenticeship uh, program, and then they come and work for us. The plus minus if you say, yeah, we pay them a stipend, then we release them into the, the job market. So it's something that we've been running with from um, four years uh, back. We've given a lot of bursaries to artisans, like electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, in terms of our core business. But we're at a stage where, um, you know, our five-year process is almost up. Obviously, if we manage and we are um, in, a, in a very good uh, footing and we manage to get our contract in, in the next five years, we certainly you know, continue with the mentorship program. I think for me it's hard to be a woman. I always say that you need to prove yourself ten times harder than your male counterpart. It's still the reality till to date. You're constantly being undermined. You're constantly being overlooked. You know, for me, for my business to be still standing, I miss, it's supposed to be a multi-billion uh, company, group of companies. But I think naturally because I'm, I'm a woman and Stephen West being a woman of color, I'm just not getting the support. The sabotage that is there being constantly undermined and you have to prove yourself a uh, hundred times. It's, it's, it's still a big thing that is a challenge uh, we're facing. Funding remains um, the biggest challenge for, I think, every, every woman. In terms of projects, one of the things that I've also seen is that the, the amount of projects that women tend to source are very different from what they would give to a male counterpart. Um, fortunately, I think in this instance, uh, from the engineering arm, we never really needed funding. All we needed to do was to bring a proposal, the mind bought into it because our pricing obviously was very good. Then we just started writing the project. But if you're doing mining in terms of drilling and loading hole, you need a lot of funding because heavy equipment is very expensive. You look at just one loader, it's about three, three million uh, to fund it. So if you come into this business, you don't have that type of money. Banks are not budging. Um, all these other financial institutions are not budging. It can be quite, quite tricky. Um, to ensure that you run the business which is going forward. If you can see the studies that are showing that those companies that are inclusive, that prioritize but diversity, the, the, the performance it's, it's and efficiencies within the organizations are, are showing, you know, natural those organizations, they grow. I don't think women are looked at, um, you know, that, that equality um, doesn't exist. You are still looked at um, in, a very, in a very different way. Very different eye. There are certain things that men are still able to do in the mining industry where you know, they would assume that a woman cannot be able to do. For example, you look at um, somebody that is appointed as a mechanic, for example. There's still a lot of resistance in terms of getting female mechanics, female electricians, because they still believe it's a male, you know, specific job. A woman cannot come and mechanicize, you know, and do mechanical job. A woman cannot come and uh, do an electrical type of job. Um, so I think that's, that's also one of the challenges that we've had. And that's why I'm very deliberate about employing um, female electricians, female uh, mechanics. In our sector, um, there are certain jobs where specifically I want to employ women to break that, the status quo and how women are obviously seen um, in, in, the, in that light. The big thing that I've managed to overcome myself personally is the imposter syndrome. You know, because I think us as women, we, we are our worst enemies. Mm -hmm. We forever doubt ourselves and, 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 and really modest on our, on, 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 on our know-how and, and our contribution. 
you know, I, I think I'm no longer feeling less of anybody else, no feeling better than anybody else, but I do know that I am enough and I'm here to add value and, 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 and I, I create the environment so no one can stop me. I'm, I'm literally unstoppable. When I believe on something, I know that if this door closes, another one will open. Your passion will carry you, your vision will carry you. If all fails, those two are guaranteed to carry you. Mining is male dominated, you need a lot of confidence to get into mining, obviously, because it's a very demands and male dominated space. Um, you need to know who you are. Just discover uh, who you are, what you're all about. Um, what, is your, what is your niche uh, market? Because every business you get into, first question should be, why do I want to get into this place? Who's my niche? What is your why? A, a type of thing. That's a very, very strategic and important platform because now it makes you to interact with, 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 with women in a global platform. You know, it's so nice to interact with women from the African continent and from, from, from Middle East. You know, it's, you, this is where you see that the challenges we're facing as women are, are more or less the same, you know, sadly. And, and I think for me, what pains me is to see the statistics of how marginalized women are. You know, the numbers, they don't lie. It's still pointing to one direction that we still not, though we are a majority, but we're not even near. To, 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 to penetrate the space and, 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 and to really uh, be, 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 be recognized and, and, and really be given opportunities just like our peers. My biggest achievement is having seen people who started off at junior posts and they've grown up, grown through the ranks and they, somebody started off as an artist and today became a site supervisor. Those, that's, that's, that's one of the things that I just immerse my heart. When I see people growing, I'm all about growth. Secondly, to also see people being able to provide, because most of our people are breadwinners. Being able to put bread and butter on their table because of the jobs that we create you know, for them. And that's another achievement as well. And the people that we've mentored, the people that we've helped um, in terms of, like I'm saying, funding bazaaries, um, we also do a lot of work in the community as well. Um, there is what they call your EDs as well, enterprise development. We've helped a lot of enterprise development in, in establishing themselves. This is from A to Z. And in terms of funding, we'll run with them for a year and say, when you are up on your feet, you tell us, then we obviously will release you. You start running on your own as well. That's another achievement. It's very, very important to, to, to have compassion and most of all to give, not give handouts, but empower people like we are doing with the academy because now we are empowering these young people to be able to be giving them the fishing rods and not just giving them the fish. So I just, I think for me also being so rooted on spirituality, it's at the center of it as human being that you need to be caring and most of all we need to give back. I always say that if we as this generation, we're failing to think ahead and invest for the next generation, this is because the current struggle right now is, 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 is the unemployment. It's, it's the, 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 the getting the right training and the right skill set. So if we privilege enough to, 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 to have resources to build and create an environment that is going to see for young people to thrive, I think we will be failing this generation. But giving back, it's, it's, it should be at the center of each and every human being. Um, if, you, if you go back um, 2021, we were um, nominated um, as a top empowerment company in 2021 because of the work that we do as a team also in terms of empowering not just our employees but also people across the board. Because remember, mining contributes um, it's about 60% to GDP um, in totality in the economy. Um, we've had several hours, 2022, we also received um, um, top interpreter award uh, of 2022. 2023, we received um, we also recognized as um, Africa Mining Business Award of 2023 uh, as well. And this year we, we were nominated as a 2024 Women Brand um, Leadership uh, in terms, again, of, of the work that we, you know, so much emphasis that we put into ensuring that our brand is not just about profit, but more about building a bigger and better society overall. I love celebrating Women's Month because it gives attention to women. But I think it should be Women's Month right through the year. 
And I think us as women, it's, 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 it must be really an intentional daily activity that you do, you know, to other women. You know, how do you, I think for me, I always ask myself, how do I impact positively the life of another woman? You know, be it, it's, 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 it's someone that comes and do my hair, it's someone that comes and do my nails, just the conversation, you know, just the, 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 the mentoring where you can. But I think having meaningful, impactful relationship as women amongst one another, it's, it's very, very important because there's this narrative that is being driven that we as women, we can't work together and we don't support one another. Yeah. For me, I'm, I'm, I go an extra mile to, 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 to make sure that in whatever little way I can, let me impact this woman's life in a positive way. Mm. Because we go through a lot as women, you know, I was just talking to a friend and saying, we need to redesign the corporate to suit us. Because right now, the corporates are not designed for us. You know, we go through a lot just from, 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 from PMS to monopause to, there's a lot that is happening. Is, and, and, and just being a mother, is the environment conducive for women? And I think as women leaders, we need to be cognizant of that and, and work towards changing that. In my career, I would say meeting Nelson Mandela was quite a big thing. Yeah. And just being able to spend the whole day with him and see his humility and how much he cares about human beings and, 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 and I'm looking and saying this man has got every reason to be bitter and be nasty but he was just so compassionate and so loving and so caring I think that for me just looking in his eyes and his smile I changed my, my whole being mm. and also I think giving birth, birth, birth to my daughter that was also a, a defining moment for me from the perspective of being a woman. I, I, it made me to respect my mother more and to understand what women go through. And, and, and just to be understanding that we, we are the carriers of life. You know, that was also the highlight. I think the third one was to meet my spiritual master, Sadhguru. That was also a defining moment. Just the, the whole environment, his... his I don't even want to say his teachings to life, but his perspective to life and just the, the energy he transmits to us. Again, where I've learned it is that if you give your all, you know, almost everything in life opens up. You know, I felt like the universe just opens up the way he gives his heart and soul to everything that is happening in his, in his, in his ashram at, 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 in Isha, India. I was like, wow, that was like... I think it's, that was also a defining moment for me. I'm hoping to, to retire at 50. And um, I'm, I'm, like I'm saying, for me, I care so much about the, the next generation. So being a, a, an angel funder and, and look, it's exciting to see the innovation that comes with young people. So being an angel investor and, and look on different uh, concepts and opportunities that are coming up with young people and, and being able to mentor them and coach them, that is my next step.